Coronavirus has the potential to be seen as many different things, something to fear, a quarantine enforcer, and even a deadly killer. And this is the reality we're collectively experiencing. And as the designers and creators of our collective reality, we must accept that we cannot always control the circumstances that befall us, but we can control how we respond to them. If we were to take a look at COVID-19 from a higher perspective, we might just see a very interesting picture come to form. The coronavirus pandemic is potentially a wake-up call, a huge lesson for us, and even an opportunity for massive change. While the long-term results of the coronavirus pandemic are still yet to be seen, there's no question that it's transforming life on earth as we know it by bringing to the surface so many conversations that we need to have. Conversations such as wet markets, treatment of life, quarantines, health, hygiene, and collective responsibility. But the thing is, absolutely none of these conversations are the beginning nor the end of the dialogue. They are all the results and responses to the experience of this pandemic. None of these actually address the higher understanding of the whole thing. We can gain a great deal of insight if we dig into the name itself, coronavirus. Corona directly translates to crown from the Latin. By the nature of the name itself, what we are dealing with here is a crown virus, which it was named for after its characteristic crown-like protein spikes. The significance of the name crown here relates distinctly with two important areas of focus, the spiritual crown and the physical crown, both of which relate with the topmost and zenith aspects of a system. We also see the word corona relating with a certain part of the sun, and we'll look at this soon. In these systems, the word crown generally relates to the organizing leadership of the higher order. In the physical systems, crown was the name for the headdress that was a powerful symbol of authority. And the name symbolically was then essentially given to those in power, like the king or the queen. And while it's not really used by democratic systems today, the word crown essentially still relates with the topmost of a social system. Now, in spiritual systems, we see the word crown being used to describe the Godhead. In both the chakras and the tree of life, the topmost sphere is called the crown. These systems describe that this important point on the human body, the top of the head, is the place through which we connect with a higher understanding, which allows us to develop greater wisdom and the inner knowing that all things are connected, no matter how separate and isolated things may appear. This is especially interesting given that isolation becomes one of our most valuable tools in combating the spread of the virus. The ancient wisdom describes that when the crown is blocked or we are unable to connect with the higher expression of our interconnected nature, we create a reality of duality consciousness and live our lives as if everything is separate. And this is one hidden lesson that we find with COVID-19. What we believe to be true today is that the virus itself probably began within wet markets in Wuhan. Now there are some theories suggesting alternatives to this, but for now, as this is the leading theory, let's continue with this idea. These are filthy environments for selling both live and dead animals. And these environments are places that bacteria and viruses can easily mutate and spread. It should come as no surprise when you keep animals jammed into tight cages, experiencing terrible suffering while other animal carcasses lay saloon about everywhere, it's only logical that this becomes a breeding ground for bacteria and diseases to jump about from host to host and eventually mutate its way into the very people who frequent these environments. Take a moment to consider just how much fear and anxiety is being created by those animals in the wet markets. It's no surprise that something negative has come out of it. If we knew, if we really knew that we were interconnected with all of life, we would most certainly treat these animals with significantly greater respect and create environments that would be clean and healthy for everyone and everything. Further, another lesson that comes from this shift to unity consciousness is the knowing that it's not exclusive to Wuhan and it's not appropriate to point the finger at anyone but ourselves. In today's world, chickens, cows, pigs, fish, and basically every kind of animal that we actively use for mass livestock are treated horribly with incredibly poor living conditions. We just published a movie called Healing Your Body with Food, and I especially recommend watching it if you want to know the truth about where your food comes from. This conversation then fractals into nearly every aspect of our lives. How do we treat ourselves? How do we treat each other? How do we treat the environment? We are now seeing reports that global smog levels are at a collective all-time low, that nature is actually healing itself 
for every day that humans stay inside, demonstrating both the living vibrance and the power of nature and how we actively kill nature through the systems and technologies that we use to live our lives. Recently, there was even an article that the canals of Venice are not only running clear water, but also have fish swimming through them for the first time in 60 years. Think about this for a moment. Our collective pandemic, which has caused us into isolation, has allowed for nature to begin to thrive day by day. That's kind of remarkable, but what's to stop us from going right back to our old ways the moment the pandemic ends? We really have to take this seriously because if we only focus on ourselves and our survival during this pandemic and not everything else, like the effects of our civilization on the world, well, I'm concerned that there will only be more suffering to come until we learn these lessons. Now, as mentioned earlier, we also see that Corona not only translates to crown, but is also the name for a particular aspect of the sun. Specifically, the sun's Corona is an aura of plasma that surrounds the sun and other stars and extends millions of kilometers into outer space and is most easily seen during a total solar eclipse. Now, speaking of the sun, the sun is essentially the crown of our solar system. In a long, almost forgotten past, the sun was seen as the essential soul the visible God in the heavens and a demonstration of the power of the Supreme Oneness. You might even be familiar that long ago, the sun was given the name Sol, essentially meaning sun personified. Regarding the sun's corona, we see that it is at the outer edge of the sun itself, just like how the tree of life describes that the crown called Keter resides at the outermost edge containing all of the other spheres within it. So too, as with us, the crown chakra relates with the farthest point on our auric field the place from which our own personal energy interacts with the energy of the rest of the cosmos. So the fact that the sun has a corona matching the name with this virus might extend our imaginations to conceive of a higher spiritual lesson here. Perhaps in some way, we can begin to see ourselves as more interconnected with the higher order of the cosmos. It seems as though the lesson here is that COVID-19 is a result of our own lack of harmony. So let's talk a bit about this from a more practical level for all of us. There is so much fear around this virus, and I get it. The possibility of imminent death can be scary. However, the fear itself is very quick to block us from recognizing that there's so much we can do about this just on our own. I think it might be valuable to see that just like COVID-19, our fear itself is also a virus and one that spreads even faster than coronavirus. What's worse, they go hand in hand. When we are afraid, steeped in anxiety and panic, our bodies release cortisol, the stress hormone, too much cortisol, and it rapidly breaks down vitamin C, which lowers our immune systems. In addition to being more at risk from coronavirus, this also can lead to rapid weight changes, skin that bruises easily, muscle weakness, diabetes, and many other health problems. All of this just from living in panic and fear. If we can recognize this quickly, COVID-19 provides all of us with a great opportunity a time for us to use this period of isolation as a point of introspection, of self-discovery, of learning and evolving so that when the virus is gone, we can emerge from our homes as stronger, wiser, and more capable than ever before. Perhaps we can even collectively learn some big lessons. No more mistreatment of animals. Let's take action about these smog levels. Let's take better care of our world. As mentioned, this is a great opportunity, but only if we decide to view it as one. The collective pain and struggle we are facing can be a great motivator for us all. And I know that for many, it already is. But if the majority of people still do nothing, if we all just sit inside in our fear and wait for the virus to disappear, we miss out on the opportunity to ride this wave of healing and regeneration that the planet is doing while we're all staying inside. So for now, I want to share a few things to support you in creating a healthy immune system. It should be known that a healthy immune system won't stop you from getting the virus. So of course, wash your hands and stay inside. However, there are ways to keep your immune system functioning optimally, which can help to keep you healthy and give you a sense of control in an uncertain time. And just to be clear, the intention of this list is to provide support and is not intended to be given as medical advice. Firstly, meditation, or simply practice taking some time to calm yourself down and then stay calm. Not only will this help your immunity, it will also help you make better choices. And instead of reacting inappropriately to panic and fear, it will empower you to respond with responsibility and maturity to what circumstances befall you. Second, pay attention to your diet and try eating things that will help your body be more alkaline, such as raw plant-based foods, 
drinking lemon water, or eating things rich in vitamin C. Studies have suggested that having a more alkaline bodily pH will support you in fighting disease. Again, we recently published the Healing Your Body with Food movie if you want to go deeper on this subject. Third, I recommend breath work. This is essentially a practice of deep purposeful breathing, kind of like an active meditation that energizes your body, gets your blood flowing, and creates lasting benefits in a number of ways. Specifically, I recommend the Wim Hof breathing technique, which has been demonstrated to boost your immune system. Fourth, scientific studies have found that taking a cold shower increases the amount of white blood cells in your body. So taking cold showers are also something that you can do. Finally, if you're able to exercise, even if you're quarantined and can't go for a walk or a run, you can do push-ups or other forms of physical activity to keep your body in healthy shape. Not only does light to moderate exercise help your immune system, it also helps you to stay calm and relieve stress. Now, if you've done all of this and you're still feeling stuck or you wanna go even further, I might recommend going through the seven day transformation. This is a week long transformative experience we created that begins at the crown chakra, opening to cosmic wisdom and higher truth and slowly brings it down into your body over the week, empowering you with new energy to create massive change in your life.